hearts. And the prophet Isaiah, right, he talks about this extensively, that we are the bride uh, of God. In Isaiah 62, it reads like the poem uh, of a man uh, to his lover and, and to his fiance, right? And you read phrases in Isaiah like, you will be given a new name by the Lord's mouth, which is exactly what happens in a wedding. The bride takes on a new name, right? Your, your, your new name will be the bride of God. That's what he says in Isaiah. And, and he says, and the Lord delights in you and will claim you as his bride. And God will rejoice over you as a bridegroom rejoices over the bride. But, but the bride terminology in the story of, uh, uh, of the people of God, it takes a dark, dark turn. Because even though God created us to be his bride, and even though he established a covenant of engagement with us, and even though he carried out the terms of the wedding, our marriage to him hit the rocks because we were unfaithful. And you read some of the latter prophets and it's almost like a country song that we've, we've run away from God, right? and we found someone else, and, and, and the kids are crying, and the food's run out, and everyone's lonely. It sounds exactly like a country song. In fact, one prophet, Hosea, was told, uh, go marry a prostitute, because that's what my relationship with Israel has become. And this amazing love story in the Bible is marred. Why? And how did it get that way? Because the people of Israel chased after idols. And those idols were indicative of their divided heart. But beyond that, they were evil. And they were demonic. And they were sick. Because this is the enemy's trick. He appears as an angel of Light. He does not appear as a gnarly demon because you wouldn't follow that. But you will follow the angel of light if you think it is good, right? And when we think about these peripheral things in our lives, they're not bad things, but they can't be the center. They weren't designed to be the center. They weren't designed to be the hub and, and let everything spin around them. Jesus designed himself to be that. And, and when he wired you and knit you together, he wired you and knit you together where there's only one hole in the center and he's the only one that can fill it. And, and, and by the way, it, it's okay. Uh, the, the, the world will tell you it's okay to put one of those things in the middle. God gave you those kids. Put them in the middle. God gave you that, uh, those blessings and those finances. Put them in the middle. God gave them to you. They're good things. Go ahead and put them in the middle. And when you put them in the center of your lives, your life will be out of balance, I promise you, every single time. And there's a reoccurring theme throughout the history of the world where, where the righteous look at the unrighteous and go, they seem to be blessed. What's the deal with this, God? And God's like, just hang on. And watch and see how this plays out because it will play out in the way that I said it will play out. And this is what happens to our marriage covenant. And after years and years of exile, he called them back again. And he says, I will make you mine again. And I'm going to bring you unto myself. And, and, and Hosea uh, chapter 2, look, look what he says. Not that one, that one. I will make you my wife forever, showing you righteousness and justice, unfailing love and compassion. I will be faithful to you and I will make you mine and you will finally know me as the Lord. He's saying, I'm bringing you back. And listen, God loves to give us the desires of our hearts, but, but he also knows that, that when uh, they are fulfilled, independent of him, they're destructive. The desires of our heart are destructive when we meet those desires independent of God. And we all have two desires. You ought to write these down. We, we all have the desire, number one, to be known. This says, I exist and I matter, right? To be known. I exist and I matter. We all have the need to, to be loved, which says, I exist and I matter to someone, right? We, we, we want to be known and we want to be loved. And both of those exist as byproducts of the way we are wired. We were wired and built for relationship. That's how God brought us together. And, and sometimes we pursue fulfillment uh, of those desires and our identity in relationship with things. 
rather than the one who created us to have a relationship with him. And and that's all about who I am and who you are and who we are. And it's about our identity in Christ. And when we place our identity in the things that we desire, instead of the one who made us, we will get out of balance every single time. And that's what happened to the Israelites in the Old Testament. And I'm afraid, quite honestly, we see it over and over and over in the New Testament church today. And what has to happen is we've got to get it into our heads and into our hearts that we are the bride of Christ, the bride of Jesus Christ, that you were meant to be the bride. And it's not you were meant to be the bride of Christ and you messed it all up. And it's not that that if you fix all this stuff, you'll be the bride of Christ. It's you are the bride of Christ right now, right now. And that's what God said, and you and I have got to believe it. And if we believe God, then we got to believe Christ, but because it's a lack of belief that causes the identity crisis in so many of our lives. 